This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial demonstrates using recursion to calculate the greatest common factor of two numbers. The greatest common factor is also known as the greatest common divisor. It's the greatest or largest number that evenly divides into a pair of numbers. Here are some examples. 35 and 10, 5 is the greatest that goes into both of them. 42 and 12, 6. 10 and 100, 10. 7 and 11 are both prime numbers. They have no common factors other than 1. 9 and 1, since 1 is prime and it's, it divides 9, a 1 is is the greatest common factor. And here, a somewhat unusual thing, when you have a number in 0, the number is the greatest common factor because 3 divides 3, it goes into 3 one time, and 0 divided by 3 is 0. So it sort of goes in there in a strange kind of a way. The greatest common factor has a property uh, an equality statement here that allows us to use a recursive solution. It works as follows. If you look at the greatest common factor of x and y, where we're considering here that the first number is the larger of the two. It says x has to be greater than or equal to y. So we put the larger number first, the smaller number second, or they could be equal then that's equal to the greatest common factor of y first and then the remainder of x divided by y. This will be our general case because we started with x and y and over here we have y which is smaller than x and the remainder of x divided by y is also a smaller number and allows us to go into self-calling of GCF but with simpler parameters coming in, a simpler pair of numbers and we can reduce down to a base case. The base case is this x0 case where the GCF is just x. This program will also demonstrate how we programmatically reorder parameters to make use of the functions simple. We have a class called GCF, a main method, and we'll be calling a recursive version and an iterative version solution. And both versions have an annotated version with an A and a non-annotated version without the A. Here are the test values we'll be looking at, the pairs of numbers, when we get to that point. First let's look at the recursive non-annotated solution. That is right here. So recursive GCF, we get our X and our Y. Now remember that the algorithm requires X to be bigger than or equal to Y, but we're not going to require that on anyone calling the method, we'll take care of that internally inside the method. So we'll do a flipping, swapping of the parameters as necessary. If x is less than y, then we'll use a temporary to swap them so that we'll have our largest one in the first position, in the x position. Then we get into the actual code and it's very simple and elegant code because of that base case. I mean because of the general case. So our base case, if y, the second parameter, is 0, we return x. Otherwise we go into the general case. The general case says we'll call the function itself, recursive GCF, passing y as the first parameter and here is the remainder of x divided by y using the modulus Java operator. 
and that gives us the remainder when we take x and divide it by y. When we get the result, we will return it. The iterative solution, the non-annotated one, is right here. It also swaps the parameters as necessary, and then it, it handles a base case. If y is 0, it returns x, and then it uses an iterative, a for loop here. We said GCF equal to 1, and we're going to vary our loop control variable i from 2 all the way up to less than or equal to y, which was the smaller of the two numbers, increasing it by 1 each time. And what we do, we look at the remainder of x divided by i to see if that's 0. That would mean that i evenly divides x. If that's true, and if i evenly divides y, and if i is larger than our current value of the GCF, well, we found a common factor if it evenly divides x and y, and if it's greater than the current GCF, that becomes our new GCF. So we'll assign i to GCF and continue the loop. When we're all done, we'll take that GCF and return it. Let's now go up to our test cases. Our first test case, 35 and 10, is already set up. Let's run this. Here we have the output from computing GCF 35 and 10, the recursive algorithm here. We start with 35 and 10, and then notice that we take 10 as the first, as the x now, and 5 is where we took and found the remainder of 10, 35 divided by 10 was 5. And so we take 10 and 5. Here we move the 5 over here, and the remainder of 10 divided by 5 is 0. We've reached a base case, and we unwind the stack and come back and get an answer of 5. Down here in the iterative solution, it's going to find each common factor and work up to the greatest one. It only finds one common factor, 5, and that's the answer. Let's go to our next test case. This time we look at 42 and 12. Recursive solution follows the same pattern. You can see the second parameter coming into the first each time for the next call, self-call, and also the division remainder. 12 goes into 42 two three times with six left over and so that's what's coming into the second parameter until you get down to the base case but each time you can see it's a simpler problem reducing down to a base case and then we unwind back up for the answer of six down here with the iterative it's very easy to see what's going on we're finding common factors first we find that two is common and then three is common then we find that six is common and we're finding greater and greater of these common factors, and the greatest one we found was 6. We'll go to our next test case. Take some larger numbers this time, 2,097 and 828. You can see it works its way down, simpler calls here, gets the answer of 9. For the iterative, it finds that 3 is a common factor, and then that 9 is a common factor. Next test case. Here, 13 and 13. GCF is 13. 13 is the, it's a prime number. Its only factor is 1 and 13, and the greatest one is 13. Here we try 11 and 7, which are both prime numbers. And we find, not surprisingly, that 1 is the greatest common factor. It's important to test boundary conditions, so in this test we test the base case itself with 3 and 0, and it does return 3, as it should. In this last test, we actually called the functions with 10 and 35, 10 in the th first spot and 35 in the second, and as we looked at in the code, the code automatically sw swaps them over to be in the correct order for the algorithms working. Let's go back to summarize what we've learned in this tutorial. 
we've examined coding for a greatest common factor solution using recursion and an iterative solution and we were allowed to do it because of this interesting relationship here between a GCF of X and Y and simpler versions of those same parameters and the base case. We also showed that we should make our functions easy to use uh, by reordering parameters if necessary if the algorithm calls for it.